Hello, everyone. Thank you for waiting. This is the TMG Online Symposium, the future of plastic recycling, advanced technologies for closed loop recycling. Thank you for joining us at this event. Not from, not just from within this country, we have participants from overseas. We are streaming this event from Tokyo where cherry blossoms are blooming. This is co-hosted by Plastic Package and Recycling Council and TMG Bureau of Environment. Let me introduce myself. I am Yasuo Furusawa, Chief Specialist for Circular Economy, Sustainable Materials Management Division, Bureau of Environment of TMG. To begin this event, I'd like to call upon the Chairman of Plastic Package and Recycling Council, Mr. Tomomichi Okano, to give us an opening remark. Thank you, Mr. Furusawa. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending this symposium. There are so many participants, more than we had expected. As was introduced, it's a great honor to be able to co-host this symposium with Tokyo Metropolitan Government. The theme of the event is the future of plastic recycling. We have seven presentations. Plastic was discussed in the committee. There has been a draft for plastic resource circulation strategy. In order to make resources to be circulated and recycled, the whole industry and society need to be restructured and you need to consider how to make it economically viable. So old sorting could be one way to achieve it, which is actually missing in the Japanese society. This social infrastructure needs to be implemented in a widespread manner. Thus, we'll be able to reconstruct the social infrastructure. I think this is quite important. In order to fulfill all the requirements, a lot of technologies are required. And the companies that are presenting today will have wonderful technologies. And I think it is necessary for all of us to be able to take actions. Once again, we have over 500 viewers and participants in this event, which is quite encouraging to all of us. You may have questions and ideas, bring them together so that we can develop our society in Japan without leaving anybody behind. And we want to part of, be part of that effort. As you listen to the presentations today, when you have any question, or idea, please do share it with us. Because we have tight schedule, I would like to brief. I have been looking forward to this event as one of the viewers. We hope the symposium is going to be fruitful, contributing to the better future for us. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to pass this back to Mr. Furusawa. Thank you, Mr. Okano. As Okana-san was saying, we have so many people joining us today, and because of that, uh, it seems like an uh, entrance, uh, so to say, uh, to this uh, site uh, online is uh, delaying the people's uh, joining. And uh, there are still people uh, who are joining as we speak, and uh, we apologize for this inconvenience. And we like to get into the program of this uh, symposium and uh, today mostly uh, sorting related topics, uh, sorting of plastics, obviously. Uh, we have uh, different uh, resins to be sorted and how they can be sorted in a very advanced manner and so that uh, they can be recycled as a uh, very usable uh, plastic material again to the market. The first on the topic of sorting technology 
we have uh, Tomura Soting and Veria Janets uh, will be presenting. And so uh, Tomura san uh, first, uh, Tomura uh, Soting Company. I'm sure you are very familiar and I believe uh, we can expect a leading edge sorting technology information. We have the president of uh, Tomura Sorting. We have Mr. Kawaguchi with us. And uh, thank you for the introduction. Once again, my name is Kawaguchi of Sorting. Should I share the screen? Uh, yes, if you could do that, that would be appreciated. Okay. So let me share the screen. Uh, I hope you can see. Yes. So, uh, since the time is limited, let me get right into it. And first, I'd like to provide the overview of our company. And uh, Tomra is the name of the company. We market uh, sorters and separators, and also collection machines as well. And uh, for example, a reverse bending machine, uh, if you uh, throw the pet bottles uh, or cans, um, they can sort uh, that. And also, uh, we provide uh, sorting and separators for recycling purpose, and also for food applications, like a tobacco, a potato chips, and fruits and uh, frozen food, uh, they all use sorting machines. And so we provide such machines. And our headquarter uh, is in Norway and it's uh, listed and has uh, purchased number of businesses. So uh, they have business in different parts of the world. We have about 4,600 employees globally and roughly Uh, 10.9 billion Norwegian uh, krone or 11 so uh, billion Norwegian krone. And when it comes to recycling, uh, not just the sorter, but also the collection machines, uh, we feel it is important to raise the recycling ratio. As you can see, the pet bottles and cans and bins, uh, they can be fed into this uh, sorting machine and they will uh, have the output to different streams. And left inside, we have so-called optical sorters and using you know, infrared or laser uh, metal detectors and uh, we separate the shape by shapes, color or material. Uh, or metal materials. And basically, uh, we have two reasons for sorting. One is that the originally the waste would have a variety of uh, materials um, and we want to extract uh, plastics. So that's one purpose. And also we want to uh, improve the grade of the plastic extracted. And the way such sorters work is that basically there are two types, uh, the belt uh, conveyor type and the chute type. And the belt type uh, basically uh, have the waste on the belt conveyor and, and along the transport. There are different sensors uh, that will separate the waste uh, by shape or color. And usually uh, air jet is used to separate the target waste. And the advantage of this is that the, it can handle a large volume in sorting. And typically in Japan, manual sorting is very common and uh, using human eyes to pick and separate the waste, but it's difficult to scale. And because this is machine, uh, it's very easy to scale and handle large volume. That's the 
first approach. And also, uh, it is becoming very difficult to get uh, affordable labor. And so the handling of waste uh, is uh, known to be viewed to be uh, very uh, hard work and in Europe and other markets where the uh, labor cost is high, this machine is uh, more productive uh, in terms of the uh, production cost. And the next type is uh, for the improving the grade, upgrading the quality and bring the plastic waste to material cycle, we need to improve the purity and so the uh, belt system will allow us to sort them, but we need to grind them. And then by gravity selection and uh, other uh, separation to have, uh, if we want to have a bottle to bottle clear, pet bottles, we need to have obtained a very high level of uh, purity. And then the after grinding, we still need to remove the contaminants in order to uh, get back to the transparent material. And that goes through with not just the pet bottles, but the other materials too, in order to uh, have a advanced material cycle, we need to have this type of machine to improve the uh, purity of the material we want to recover. And uh, probably the major topic of today's symposium is the when we want to have a closed loop plastic recycling and there are a number of gaps uh, still existing and that's what's being pointed out by many experts and uh, i have identified eight uh, different gaps along the value chain and one is by design design gap and then quantity or the volume and then affordability or economy in the gap and a quality gap and and regulations and a policy type uh, gap and the customers or general public's uh, perception and that includes not just the consumers uh, but also the producers of the products having those stakeholders perception uh, including the producers and the people in the distribution and uh, intermediate uh, processing and consumers and it's difficult to align all different stakeholders and also the waste data uh, to be become more refined and what is used and what is not used and that's not really clear yet and that's what these other things pointed out and why these become gaps is first uh, for design gap the uh, the function uh, is very important for plastic materials and it's not monofracture but a lot of uh, additives are added to enhance its performance and uh, for example uh, compared with the uh, simple one material uh, the chemical compounds become more uh, complex and you can sold them to some extent, but after collecting them, it becomes a problem, challenge for recycling. For example, PE or PT, and compared with the virgin material, T and PT uh, may not be the same. And the same goes through with other resins. Then it is a very difficult task 
to bring the material back to its original property. And, and also amongst these different gaps, you see the circles and triangles and cross mark and based on our own subjective judgment and why it is done well in Europe, but not in Japan. Now, in Europe uh, is uh, quite advanced and has come up with many ways and means to improve the recycling rate. And uh, that includes uh, the request to the producers to use or come up with the material and products, uh, including packaging, uh, so that it's recycling friendly. And uh, producers are not always, but they're more likely to accept such a request. But when it comes to Japan, however, even though companies do give some thoughts, but uh, pursue design for recycling purpose, that's not something uh, which has the high priority. It's still the um, performance and functionality is uh, very important. But recently, some of the pet bottles uh, are becoming more friendly to recycling, for example, eliminating the uh, wrap label and so on. And so called recycling, uh, for example, mechanical recycling and chemical recycling. In Japan, uh, our market tends to focus on chemical recycling. And uh, mechanical recycling is perceived to have some limitations in Japan. And that is because uh, it really has to do with the, to what extent you sort them, uh, T and P and the PS as well, uh, bring to certain level of purity and uh, get the gray pellet. And it's not really recycling, but the downcycling and they use it for easier purposes. But the actual version, uh, it's not really a version material equivalent. And uh, right now, uh, there isn't a call or demand for version equivalent high quality product out of this recycling. And why in Japan, we don't have sorting center, which is available in Europe and not in Japan. For example, one example, Ivar, Norway plan, and has 22 NIR sorting machines. And the reason why they go all the way to that level is that the, not just by material, but by color as well, so that uh, they are sorted to different streams. And I want to show you to what extent uh, they can do that. And this is uh, just a pilot or demonstration plant. And so-called uh, plastic uh, can be separated to transparent, white, red, and blue or whatnot. And so by these different colors, uh, we can have a different color uh, pellets, obviously, it's not the same as the version plastic, but the it's not just a gray pellet either. So it is still more amicable for further usage. The reason why they can do that in Europe is the colored uh, or different color uh, material after recycle, uh, there are demand for different colors. In Japan, unfortunately, transparent white uh, may have some demand, but uh, colored material have very limited um, possibility for further usage. So, uh, the there are companies who'd 
accept the mixed color and because they don't uh, really have the channel uh, for the down so they end up uh, all thrown into the gray pellet stream and local uh, governments uh, don't have uh, this scale of the plant in their plan but the private sector uh, companies uh, who are trying to up get the high level of recycling and uh, they are planning this large-scale plant and not just from the industrial waste but also from the uh, consumer uh, household waste uh, I understand there are many projects uh, beginning at the moment okay that's it from me thank you if you have a question uh, including for other presentations please uh, send in your questions to Q&A box as we communicated to you all by chat and Kawaguchi-san let me ask a question though this uh, by resin type uh, by color uh, separation uh, either in Japan or in Europe so these colored uh, uh, resins uh, where do they identify the applications in Europe or for what kind of a consumer products uh, if you have any examples that would be great yes for example uh, as you can see this uh, red plastic and is uh, it really comes from a console box of a car and that after having been sorted and uh, they are pelletized and then brought back to the customer and uh, if the quality is uh, acceptable to or clear the quality level they are looking for then they are used so if uh, you excessively pursue the design and color uh, may become a limitation because uh, you cannot uh, have the control uh, perfect control uh, the color may be some lose some luster but in Japan design and color gets the top priority so that becomes a challenge and for example not just us but also the uh, car bumpers uh, they use lots of uh, recycled material and uh, it's not out of the optical sorting but uh, if they are to color it black later uh, that's very conducive already but uh, if uh, we have uh, more color applications we will expand the usage and and uh, just one sh uh, question uh, how about the multi-layer films uh, is it possible to have a material recycling and multi-layer film uh, for example alumni uh, based uh, film if you can delaminate um, yes you can to some extent uh, and uh, not all the plastic resin can be delaminated so sometimes uh, and basically you have to expect some mixture uh, so for uh, contamination less than 100 ppm for pet bottle uh, that's still a challenge a uh, big challenge and if you need that kind of a purity you need to go to chemical recycling in the future okay thank you very much and mr kawaguchi and it was very informative thank you very much Next presentation is from Vernaria Janet. We have Mr. Toshikazu Kida, Deputy Head of the Waste Solution Business. He is also going to talk about sorting technologies. Veria is a famous name. Veria Janet is a Japanese company of the Veria 
group. So, Mr. Akira, that's always yours. Thank you. My name is Kira from the area Janet. I hope you can see the screen of my presentation. So let me begin. To start with, I would like to give you the overview of the Veolia Group. Veolia is a global company which has the revenue of a little over 5 trillion yen with 220,000 employees. Our major businesses include the water and sewage and energy saving or energy related businesses as well as waste treatments. So these are the three major business lines that we have. And I am in charge of plastic waste. Now, as you can see, Japan is part of the Asia Pacific group. So within the waste solution business, we have a plastic business department. Sorting centers, we have more than 200 of them across the world. As you can see here on the slide, we have recycling factories. In Europe, we have 21 recycling factories and 15 recycling factories in Asia. And total production capacity is about 600 kilotons per year. And we have four plants in Japan. One additional plant is currently under construction. This shows the plastic business in Japan. Ecos factory and Green Loop are two factories that can accept post-consumer packaging plastics. And this is recycled in these factories. Planic on the, the right started its operation in October last year. It deals with ASR as well as mixed plastics from households. And because of the new law for recycling plastic materials, there will be hard plastics to be collected. And this is the factory that can accommodate this uh, hard plastics waste as well. So let me now talk about today's topic, sorting technology. As of today, in general waste, 410, 4.1 million tons is uh, plastic waste. Material recycling and chemical recycling have been performed for some resins, respectively 68 thousand tons for recycling, material recycling, and 27, uh, 270,000 tons for chemical recycling. And plastics, material recycling, and chemical recycling uh, are expected to grow in Japan. But in order to make it happen, we need to be able to collect and sort the plastic waste. And after the sorting, we have to apply material recycling. In each stage, there are technologies that are needed, especially at the time of collection. The earlier, make sure that collection is done efficiently and ensure traceability with the application that we developed. Although this application is not introduced into the Japanese market, It has already been introduced in EU. And beyond the sorting center, there is material recycling. Uh, 
Current recycling is we are approaching to make it closed loop. So we have to have the stripping and uh, de-inking. This technology needs to be developed. Toyo Inc. and Itochu are our partners in this area for this particular development. And if you look at the sorting center, when we collect more volume, and the waste is sorted and selected, so be sent to recycling factories, and we have to have this large-scale sorting center. So this is just one example of recycling at the sorting center. Output could be chemical recycling. It doesn't have to be just chemical recycling. You can be as fine as this, or you can be a finer or rougher than this. And to the left, you have the selection process. We have uh, different uh, um, separators from the magnetic sorting machine and ballistic separators and so forth. Let me explain these sorting or separating equipment. Let me introduce the very first selector, Tromo. This is often referred to as Tromo. As you can see in the image, plastics will be fed from the left. Larger waste will be emitted to the right, and smaller ones will drop downward. We will be able to separate by size. And as you can see in the photo on the right, this is a tromo that is used in Europe compared to Japan. This is by far larger sorting center than the ones that we have in Japan. And when plastics are collected more, we believe this is going to be quite important. This is referred to as ballistic separator. As you can see here in this illustration, when plastic is fed in, the film plastics will move up because of this special structure. The 3D shape will be bounced up, thus rolled down downward. Thus, we'll be able to separate the waste by the shape. And there are holes poked on the plate. So this will enable screen small uh, foreign matters and impurities. This has been already explained by the speaker from Tomra. So I'd like to skip this. This is the automatic separator. This is part of the recycling process rather than a part of sorting process. This is gravity sorting. Usually we place water in the tank and we actually separate resin, whether it is floating or sinking. Planic is a factory that we built in Shizuoka. When the specific gravity is larger than one, that is the gravity of water, we can actually separate that from the resin that has smaller specific gravity smaller than one. This is one of the various sorting technologies. You see, you see in the middle, this red area is the sorter. You can see different colors coming in on the belts. When there is a lot of yellow plastic coming in, 
this automatic sorter will be able to collect yellow waste plastic and then the rest blue and red will going up on the conveyor and at that timing when the red waste is larger than blue in volume this automatic sorter will be able to pick the red plastics and then next blue so this has been all done automatically with one single machine it can actually collect different waste plastics when there is a space limitation this is a very useful and effective solution now this is part of the hand sorting on a conveyor we will apply image recognition technology and the people will be looking at the touch panel and as you can see in this photo you can touch on the screen to indicate a specific piece of resin that you want to pick up and we can use the air jet to remove that particular waste if you are manually handling the plastic waste there is always a risk of having a scratch or cut on your hands but having this remote remover uh, this is more efficient and safer for the operator lastly i want to talk about resource circulation how this flows in order for us to have the resource circulation this is where all the resources start they are collected sorted and transported and from right to left you have multiple stages of recycling and selection uh, grinding and separation washing drying freaking as well as extrusion and in some cases you might want to add additives to come up with compound pellets today i focused on sorting this stage but in order to close the loop of recycling you have to cover from the collection up to recycling processes all of these stages need to be connected from end to end Veolia has no house and track record on each one of these stages so it's not just sorting and selecting we can contribute to plastic recycling at every stage this concludes my presentation thank you for listening thank you mr kida we have one question as you mentioned laminated film delamination technology is going to be important there was a question early on in relation to that question i think it is necessary to be able to identify the product that needs to be delaminated the so the first thing you have to do is to sort out the plastic waste that need to be or can be delaminated and how can you be able to pick specific waste to be delaminated and by what time do you want to complete this development to make sure that the, this removal or delamination is possible uh, i cannot give you the details but there are two things that i can share today at the time of collection we will be able to sort those specific waste first and that is one way of dealing with that and there will be a talk later on today on digital watermarks that is one possible technology to be able to select that specific plastic waste so delamination technology or removal technology of the film i cannot exactly give you my when you may want to contact me and um, personally i understand i believe uh, there is a lot of things i cannot uh, disclose especially for the technology that are under development 
the OES Sonic factory. What is the uh, processing capacity of this new factory that you have in Shizuoka? The total investment has not been disclosed. I cannot give you the amount of investment, but processing power is 48,000 tons per year. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, Mr. Kida. Um, I know there are many other questions, but we'd like me to move on. Next, uh, we have on the topic of material recycle uh, trend. After uh, materials are sorted, I believe it is a very important step. Uh, the latest trends in mechanical recycling will be presented by Mr. Isono, president of uh, Isono Company Limited. Please. Okay, uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. And once again, my name is Isono of Isono Company Limited, and thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. I'm very honored. Thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. And I will talk on the topic of latest trends in mechanical recycling. Next page, please. The first about the Isono uh, and its outline. And we are headquartered in Nagoya City. And however, we do have other locations at Inazawa and Kyushu. So two plant locations. And also uh, for sales office, uh, Inazawa, Kyushu, Tokyo, and Nagano, uh, four places. We were founded in 1957. We have about 100 employees and with uh, annual sales of about 10 billion yen. And basically, uh, we work with the OEMs or brand companies. Our uh, group company is called uh, Seiwa Chemical in Aichi as well. And Shanghai and Thai, we have our subsidiary companies. Next, please. So uh, the history of our company and very briefly, briefly, let me walk through in 1958. Uh, uh, vinyl polycarbonate is about the only thing uh, material resin available, uh, but then the our founder, uh, Toshio Isono, came across vinyl and we is there was a automotive uh, molding company and we started uh, collecting the process refuse and bring them back to the production and that's how we got into a high level recycling and 1988 and working with the major material company we had a joint uh, business uh, for new material and uh, recycled material and uh, technologies uh, integrated and that formed the basis of our current technology in 2013 and the cars uh, have using our recycled material uh, gotta hit the market next please hey okay and uh, some of our characteristics or strengths and typically waste uh, plastic uh, and the sprue runner and uh, in process uh, defects are formed into repellent uh, by applying uh, heat uh, but uh, instead uh, we use a re in full uh, cement and uh, talc enforcement, elastoma and glass fiber and carbon fibers. And also uh, additives uh, are added and uh, with the flame retardant and the conductive edge and so on to uh, come up with the functional requirement of the customers. And so we come up with this uh, material and so our concept is to have a very advanced level um, recycling including additives and pigment addition and other performances next please and some of the example of application and this is for automotive and car to car or something to car is uh, our recycling model and uh, using a pir material and that is a pre-market uh, um, or 
industrial uh, level refuse coming from automotive, food, and other uh, health uh, equipment as well. And PCR coming from the consumer and uh, boxes and tumblers and also uh, off-grade products from virgin material plant makers. And uh, ensuring the virgin equivalent properties, we are providing about the 7,000 tons of recycle grade company. And we uh, collect uh, all the products and get the recycled material from that. But in terms of the uh, in-process refuse, uh, reprocessing, uh, we are differentiating from that. And in 2013, in it was uh, got, it became a certified product for automotive usage. And uh, it was uh, our material, recycled material, was used in the car bundle called SAI. And uh, some of the uh, recycled use cases in Mesa Nagoya 2013, working with Toyota, we had this play like this. You can see a trunk tray uh, on the left, and that is made of the, uh, and also grill and uh, radiator cover. These three are made of the recycled material. And about uh, 30 kilos uh, grams of uh, recycled material is used uh, per car, per vehicle. Next, please. We, uh, one of the important business of ours is a car to car recycle and for the last 10 years, we are engaged in that. And uh, end of life vehicles uh, practice, practice uh, had in the past uh, not been put into a good use. Uh, then uh, the assembly uh, business uh, we visit and uh, get the actual uh, product and uh, use those uh, parts to recycling. So uh, material recycle expansion for car to car. And this still does uh, take a lot of work. And there are about uh, 2,500 auto the assembly cars. And we only work with the large businesses, about 300 of them to collect uh, these um, car parts and uh, it's still we are not really making a viable business yet but we are working closely with the people with the same uh, ambitions in the future for the future and only about uh, 800 tons of uh, recovery or collection has been achieved per annum and which is uh, way below what the oems uh, want us but we are trying to introduce some incentives to increase this uh, collection volume. And from that, we want to work with the auto um, post, uh, ELB post process uh, businesses and in order to bring this business into a profitable one and by 2025 we want to uh, achieve uh, 4,000 tons per annum and by 2030 uh, 40,000 tons and we have uh, actually set up the ELV development team um, in our organization and I know this is a big ambition but uh, we want to keep uh, working on it. Next, please. And uh, plastic uh, recycling loop initiatives in Fukuoka, Chikugo, uh, after the law for plastic material recycling promotion law. And uh, we have uh, been working on this area, and I want to introduce this uh, plastic recycling loop initiatives in Goka, uh, Chikugo, and uh, large pieces of uh, product uh, plastics or 
packaging plastic will be brought into our plant and to get a high quality plastic recycled plastic and we want to bring some visibility to encourage local governments to act on this area in this area next please and uh, some of the uh, organization we work with and uh, local governments and the private sectors and academia and other organizations we work with in this uh, council of Koka Chikugo. And uh, you also see some of our work uh, workshop and also analysis of the ingredient composition as well by the local residents as well. Next, please. And currently, it is a red, a green and red. Uh, actually, uh, it was supposed to be animated first uh, green, and the green shows the current status of plastic recycling and uh, manually sorted, and then uh, RPF 50% and the material recycle 50%. This is the usual flow we see in the current market but we want to have a more optimized um, flow uh, to have a high quality pellet uh, for recycling purpose and we have worked with the Fukuoka University you can see this is a black pellet and uh, what we collected in Ogimachi and the pellet we obtain from private sectors uh, have been uh, turned into a, a bucket for waste uh, bins and uh, which are distributed to the local residents in this program okay so the Plastic uh, recirculation and food recirculation are integrated in a very interesting manner. And we feel that the, this NPO and us can work and uh, with the local uh, and a passive and active uh, circulations are working together in this project, and which is a very good uh sign and that was a very brief uh, interaction on my present in my presentation thank you mr isono and we do have questions and you talked about the certified material by oem or car makers what kind of certification is that uh, was the question and also uh, off grade material is uh, can off grade material can be included in the certified to be certified? No, uh, right now, and uh, PIR PCR is fine, PIR or PCR 100%. Uh, so far, off grade material is not uh, accepted uh, for certification. And what kind of certification is that? And so this is a somewhat of a uh, trade secret, but the, there are three types uh, for interior usage, exterior usage, and there are two types of interior usage and one type for expert. Three types of purple plane PP are certified, I say. And uh, ours are, and uh, they are listed uh, and by the car makers and they have uh, formally certified and let me ask one question additional question in the screen the it says a high performance pelletizer uh, was mentioned in the last uh, page uh, yeah uh, if you could explain that working with the Fukuoka University yes in working with the Fukuoka University without uh, compromising the uh, material property we can get the uh, pellets and in the um, we get some void or the 
catch area in the X-ray loop. And so that the we once uh, it is kind of uh, separated, we'll once again put them together to get the better performance. And that way, and uh, plastic, which is more feasible for uh, downstream uh, molding. And so the material, plastic material, which couldn't be used, uh, becomes more viable products. And that's, I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Isono. Thank you. Next, uh, going, moving on, uh, using the solvent, uh, PP high level material recycling and pure cycle technologies and uh, Mitsui Company Limited uh, will talk on this topic. And the first will run the video of uh, I'll take it back. Uh, I have uh, Wakasaka San Opia Cycle to introduce. Yes. And uh, thank you very much uh, for giving us the opportunity to talk about our business project. Uh, our very unique mechanical recycling technology and the mass production technology uh, can be used to recycle um, PP, uh, polypropylene, to get the version equivalent material, recycled material. And that recycled material uh, can be sent back to the market. And we have global uh, project. And we have our CEO, Dustin Olson, um, who sent us the video uh, message. And so uh, we would like you to see that. And then following that, uh, Mitsui Company Limited, uh, Mr. Iwata, uh, who is our partner, uh, to talk about our business in Japan and also our recycling business in Japan. So without further ado, please run the video. Okay, please. Hi, my name is Dustin Olson. I'm the CEO of Pure Cycle Technologies. I'm very excited to be here with you today with an opportunity to talk about one of my many loves, but pure cycle technologies. I'm a chemical engineer, grew up in Southern Illinois and went to school at the Missouri School of Mines. I've worked in the oil industry for approximately 24 years across varying different uh, disciplines in engineering, operations and maintenance, in refining and petrochemicals, also in propylene oxide. But the last 10 to 12 years, I've gotten to work with polypropylene. Today, we have a great opportunity to talk to you about PureCycle. PureCycle is a very unique company. It's a recycling company that takes waste polypropylene that's either thrown away by industry or thrown away by consumers and converts it back into a like new product, a virgin equivalent replacement. We call it a no compromise solution because the customers that buy our product they don't have to change what they do in order to use our recycled product. We're also very excited about our carbon footprint and our ability to deliver it in a cost-effective way. We have a carbon footprint relative to virgin polypropylene that is 35% less usage of carbon and an energy footprint that's 80% less energy usage when compared to virgin polypropylene. Those two things, great product properties combined with fantastic sustainability footprints, along with the ability to consume lots of different types of feedstocks enables PureCycle to have a revolutionary technology that everyone in the world is going to want to use. The PureCycle process is very unique. We do what we call a molecular wash on the plastic. So we don't wash the outside of it, we wash the inside of the plastic. So anybody that knows about polypropylene knows that it's compounded, there's lots of additive packages, there's lots of things that are added to polypropylene in order to give it the properties that it needs. What we do is we do a molecular wash. We wash all of those materials out. So the dyes, the talcs, the additives, the elastomers, all of that gets washed out of the product 
so that we can return back to the market a pure polypropylene product. One of the things that's very unique with PureCycle is the way we do our process. We use a concept called supercritical extraction in order to remove the contaminants out of the feed. Because we use such a fundamental process to clean the feed, it gives us much more capability to buy other distressed feedstocks that, that other recyclers cannot process. Because of our unique technology, our ability to consume lots of different types of feed, and our ability to produce a superior product to the market, our growth strategy is really blooming. We've got announcements in Europe where we will build one to four sites at the port of Antwerp. We have announcements in South Korea with SK Geocentric where we build a facility with them in their recycling complex. And now we have an announcement with Mitsui where we will build one or more facilities in Japan in order to help Japan solve the recycling problem in their nation. So because of PureCycle's unique position in the market with a technology that allows us to buy feedstock from just about anywhere, allows us to produce a product that is superior to the market, every country in the world that generates waste, which is all of them, has a unique value proposition to bring a PureCycle technology into their nation. We have, a, we have our announcements in the United States and our first commercial plant in Ironton, Ohio is near mechanical complete and will be starting up in Q1, Q2 of this year. We have our announcement in Augusta, Georgia, which is going to be a cluster facility that can hold up to eight purification lines or one billion pounds of production in Augusta. And we also have our global growth announcements, which are Europe with the port of Antwerp, one to four lines, SK Geocentric in South Korea for one line in the middle of their recycling complex, and now also with Mitsui in Japan. We're very excited to bring our technology with Mitsui to Japan because we view Japan as a global leader in recycling technology. They have been on the forefront of innovation for the last centuries of time, bringing new technologies to the whole globe. And we want to help Japan put a fingerprint on recycling as well. Japan is a perfect location for us because you have high density population. The location that we will choose will be within uh, a good distance to population centers. But more important to that are the intangibles that Japan brings to this, uh, to this technology. You're a highly conscientious society. You care about recycling. 30, 40, 50 years ago, when people didn't know what recycling was, Japan started doing it better than everybody else. We will be able to leverage that behavior as well as that infrastructure to bring the feed together for a pure cycle facility. And also Japan is a thought leader. They are a global thought leader in automotive and in electrical. They, they, they continue to bring new technologies to the world that everybody enjoys using every day. So in closing, I would first like to thank Mitsui and all the people who have been there with us to develop this project. You have been a first class team, a great partner, and we're excited to start this journey with you. I would also like to thank the broader company of Mitsui by having the foresight to drive in this direction. The world is going here and Mitsui will be on the front edge. And lastly, I'd just like to thank the nation of Japan. In many ways, your nation has taught the world what recycling ought to be. And as a result of that, technologies like PureCycle have had the capability to be developed. So thank you for all of your support. Thank you for a good journey so far. And I can't wait to get moving forward with you to build this plant in Japan. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. We'll be taking questions at the very end after another presentation by Mitsui and Company. We have uh, head of Poly Aleph in business, functional materials, performance materials, business units. Mr. Takaru Iwata from Mitsui and Company, please. Thank you. Can you hear my voice? Yes, we can. As CEO Dustin Olson and Mr. Akasawa mentioned, we are a partner to BCT. Um, from Mitsui and Company. 
My name is Iwata. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I'd like to thank PNG and co-host. What I'd like to talk about today is the use of pure cycle technologies, the project that we have in Japan. As you can see here, the title of the presentation is Ultra Pure Recycled PP. This is the recycled PP. This is the trade name of the product, UPRP, utilizing a pure cycle technologies. To begin with, I'd like to talk about the reasons why we decided to use pure cycle technologies. Let me talk about our uh, policies. These are the materialities that we recognize as a company. In terms of plastic waste, as you can see on the upper left hand side, if you look at Japan, we have customers, we need to provide stable supply of materials to our customers. And at the same time, if you look at the upper right hand side, we need to create an eco-friendly society based on circular economy. So we need to balance these two requirements that I think is a major social challenge. In order to overcome this challenge, we decided to take on this direction. Now, this is another example. In recent years, we have seen a rising issue of marine plastics. A lot of attention has been given to the big impact by plastic on the environment. If you look at food packages, there has been a shift to alternatives like the plastic alternatives or other alternative materials. So the horizontal axis is really about the availability of alternative materials and the vertical axis is the recyclability. On the lower left hand side quadrant, you see the cutlery straws and plastic bags. These can be replaced with alternative materials. There is no need to continue to use plastic materials in this quadrant. On the other hand, if you look at the upper right hand side quadrant, this is the area where plastics are needed. These are essential plastics. The need of storing food for a long time, how packages are required. So we need to continue to utilize plastic materials in this area. So how can we make the plastics more recyclable due to developing a new system? So that is something that we need to focus on. With that in mind, we decided to take on this challenge and project. So that is really the basic thinking in our company. In order to build circular economy and society, since 2020, we have had talks with pure cycle technologies. And during the COVID-19, we had continued to have communication on the web, uh, uh, online. And we need to make sure that plastics are recycled. And in 2021, in September, our company and Pure Cycle Technologies came to sign the memorandum of understanding for developing recycled polypropylene production. This was already explained by Dustin, CEO. This is about Pure Cycle Technologies. As he explained early on in the video, what is interesting is, first of all, we'll be targeting polypropylene. That is quite interesting, isn't it? We are recycling pet 
bottles internally in Japan. It is important to enhance recycling. On the other hand, polypropylene, as Mr. Isono, the only speaker, mentioned, polypropylene recycling is still limited in terms of a quantity. If you look at the material recycling, right in the middle, high-end polypropylene is being recycled because of its high concentration of polypropylene in the feedstock. So we have to have highly pure polypropylene in the feedstock in order to expand the recycling activities. If we are limited to high purity BP, it's very difficult to scale. And if you use the mixed plastics, when BP is 80% or more, even though it includes pigments and additives, we can apply pure cycle process. We will be able to remove additives. As you can see here, this is the process to the left. PP 80% feedstock is input here. The so order that is yellow and light blue polyethylene in the pure cycle process, we'll be able to remove them. As the speaker from Tamara mentioned, we can combine this process with sorting system. I think this combination is quite important. So when PP concentration is over 80%, it is important to make sure that we have the supply of that feedstock available. So when it comes to the project here in Japan, our company in PureCycle set a target to start operation in 2026. We are talking with the recyclers. We have to make sure that we can procure uh, waste VP in how we can sell that recycled product to users, how we can develop application areas. And we plan to achieve the production capacity of 59,000 tons per year. So PP concentration 80% or more, feedstock is required. So what we are trying to achieve is 70,000 tons of PP rich feed socks. We have to make sure there's sufficient supply from recyclers. We are currently collaborating with recyclers to make it possible. So what are some of the feed stocks? So let me talk about the feed stocks that we can use. The major feed stock will be the plastic waste from households goes to consumer plastics. In the United States, there will be a factory starting soon to recycle cooking, use the cooking oil. This will be the very first biocycle cycle plant. So the feedstock is coming from the consumer kitchens. specific gravity selection, washing and cleaning, optical selection, all of these can be combined with a PCT process so that we actually create a 80% or more concentration PP feedstock. And we'll be collaborating with recyclers to make sure there's, there will be sufficient volume of feedstock. And then they can be made into pellets of flakes. And then we can purchase the pellets of flakes. But they don't have to be always in the form of pellets. Flakes are also 
useful. We also have flexible container bags, home appliances, and scraps from factories. They can also be candidates for our feedstock. So this is a slide that explains possible applications. As was already explained, UPRP is a version equivalent quality recycled PP. So this is the added value. We would like to have off-takers, consumers, or the users who recognize the value of this to use this. In Ohio factory in the United States, recycled PP that is to be produced. Uh, there has already been long-term offtake con um, contract signed. Food manufacturers and other manufacturers have already booked the sales, the purchase of that recycled PP. It might take uh, some time to get it certified, but uh, I believe that this can be useful for um, automotive applications as well. As CEO Dustin mentioned, we would like to be a leading uh, model in Asia, demonstrating the success of sorting along with all the uh, partners. So we hope to strengthen our partnership. Thank you so much. Now we have some questions. So I'd like to have Pure Cycle Technologies and Mitsui and Company answer this. Okay, and because of the time, uh, I may not be able to cover all the questions. Uh, but uh, just first question, uh, other than PP, how about the PE and PS? Uh, uh, in the future, uh, would this technology be viable for other uh, plastic materials? And uh, in looking at the overall system, uh, how would that uh, your system compete in price? And so price competitiveness. And yet another question for the multi-layer films, if there is aluminum, uh, non-solvent material is included in the multi-layer, uh, what would happen? So these are questions. Uh, let me uh, first answer. And there are three questions, as I understand. The first was, uh, other than PP, uh, how about other materials? This uh, super critical uh, solvent uh, this is basically applicable to other resins and depending on the process conditions, uh, how you set the process condition uh, is all it's about. Right now, we are focused on the polypropylene PP, but the polyethylene, if we focus on that, uh, we can bring a high uh, level purity and that's possible technically and uh, theoretically but uh, it's not uh, within our business plan at the moment and in terms of the price competitiveness that and uh, there are different steps of uh, purity enhancement so it is not cheap so in the past the material, uh, recycled material uh, has to be cheaper than the uh, virgin material. Uh, that was a dominant concept expectation. But uh, the value of the recycling uh, needs to be recognized by the society. And compared with the virgin material, it will be more expensive uh, in terms of cost and price as well. And third question regarding multi layer uh, material and uh, we delaminate or the separate different layers through uh, PRS purification process. So aluminum uh, will be delaminated in the process and will be collected through filtering as well. 
and I believe that's my, and I mean, that's my understanding. Thank you very much. There are many other questions, but because of the time, we'd like to move on to the next question. Thank you very much, Wakasaka-san and Iwata-san. Wakasawa-san and Iwata-san, thank you very much. Next up, we have the next speaker, the speaker from PS Japan. He will talk about the monomerization of PS, polystyrene. We have Executive Managing Director of Production Technology Department of PS Japan. We have Mr. Masafumi Kobayashi, please. Thank you. I'm Kobayashi from PS Japan. So I want to talk about the reduction of polystyrene into monomer monomers. I'd like to introduce our company first, polystyrene PS resin. That's what we deal with. We manufacture, sell, and research PS resin. Our parent companies include Asahi Chemical and Iremizu Kosan. As you can see, the ownership ratio. The polystyrene department of these companies were separated through M&A. We started our operation in April 2003. This coming April, we celebrate 20th anniversary. You see, this is the revenue size, the number of employees. We have factory in Sodegaura, Chiba Prefecture. We also have another factory in Mizushima, Inokagayama Prefecture. We have research and development uh, office in Kanagawa Prefecture. Now I want to talk about polystyrene resin. I also want to talk about some of the uh, applications. So one of the five major plastics. So largely they are grouped into two, G GPPS, general purpose polystyrene and high impact polystyrene. So GPPS is similar to glass. HIPS, on the other hand, this will be polymerized with rubber so it can withstand the impact. So the GPPS, you remember, remember the trays and shelves in the refrigerator or CD case. And many of the products are also in the dome format, some of the uh, food packages that are often utilized. Or they could make into sheets, sheet form, the uh, lunchbox cases would be a good example. Now, if you look at high impact polystyrene, we used to have traditional materials utilized for air conditioner housing and printer housing. But today they are also used as food contact containers like yogurt container. If you look at the breakdown of the application demands, since 2000 up to 2021, in around 2000, there has been 1 million tons of demand, but most recent years in 2021, it has declined to 646,000 tons. Some of the manufacturers shifted their production bases to overseas, and thus demand declined. But if you look at food containers, demand is quite stable in Japan. Out of 650,000 tons, the domestic market, two thirds are for food containers. Remaining one third is for electric uh, devices and other general goods. So polystyrene, as I mentioned earlier, much of that is utilized 
for food containers, it's a single-use material in many cases. So mechanical recycling can be applied. So polymer to polymer recycling, we see some progress made. But in the case of polystyrene, as I mentioned earlier, current application, much of that is really food contact material. But recycled polystyrene is not easily used for food contact applications. So in terms of polystyrene, mechanical recycling development is limited. But there is another chemical recycling path. As you can see, this is the oilification and gasification, which can then be fed into the upstream of oil production, reducer of uh, reactor or furnace can be one way. It doesn't matter if it's mixed plastics, it can also be utilized as food contact application. But the shortcoming is that you have to put it back to the upstream of the process. It takes a lot of energy to make it happen. What we are trying to do is to achieve this middle way. This is the, the polymerization recycling. The polymerized polystyrene needs a monomers so that we can utilize that recycled product for food contact applications, energy, CO2 emission can be limited. Having said that, we should be able to select polystyrene precisely to make sure that we have a high purity. So we need to be able to separate polystyrene to make it single material. On the other hand, if we can do good on the selection, depolymerization is a very effective and advantageous way of recycling. So reducing polymers into monomers, polystyrene is a good candidate for depolymerization. The reason is so indicated here. First of all, polystyrene has high cracking yield. Chemically speaking, during pyrolysis, radicals are generated. This will be secondary radicals. There are three levels. The third radicals are very stable. In case of PMMA, the third radicals will be generated to enable very stable pyrolysis. Polystyrene will generate secondary radicals. However, polystyrene will have benzene rings that stabilizes the resonance. So out of all the secondary radicals, we believe the radicals generated from polystyrene is the most stable. Out of all kinds of resins, the polystyrene has the second highest cracking yield only after the other uh, resin. And the reaction energy is quite low, meaning that the energy that is required for pyrolysis can be small. And the resultant steering monomers handling is easy because it's mono material monomer. It is liquid at ordinary temperature and pressure. If it's in the gaseous form, you need to have compressor, but compressors are not necessary to deal with monomers, uh, steering monomers. But there are disadvantages the residue is uh, emitted. Small amount of residue is uh, 
uh, generated, it needs to be discharged outside of the equipment. And also you need to separate the feedstocks. If you look at food packages that are used in Japan, many of them are composite materials. So we want to develop technologies to separate different materials. So even before uh, we are able to separate them, we have to sort them out. So the um, depolymerization into monomers has been tried out by many companies in Japan and outside. One thing that I can say is one way is really extruding pyrolysis. This equipment has self-cleaning function. Therefore, residue can be easily removed, which is uh, the advantage. Having said that, you need to consume electricity uh, to apply friction energy for pyrolysis, and this energy input can be quite large. Another way of performing pyrolysis is microwave. So this is similar to microwave oven, you can actually heat locally. Because of the local heating, you can heat up the waste plastic in a short period of time. As a result, you will be able to get high uh, uh, pyrolysis yield. On the other hand, I believe that the downside is the scaling. I came to believe that it is not easy to scale microwave pyrolysis. And the third option is the option that we have chosen, uh, the technology that is from Toshiba plant systems. When polystyrene is pyrolyzed, there will be byproduct. This byproduct can be utilized as a fuel for combustion. And this is the source of heat to pyrolyze polystyrene. I think this is the major benefit. The current challenge is how to remove residue. Without this, it's very difficult to achieve continuous production. So uh, there is room for improvement for residue discharge. This is the new technology which is under development. It has not been perfected. So uh, for every option, there are pros and cons. Out of the three options, polystyrene industry, I believe should come together sharing best possible technologies for polystyrene recycling, for uh, depolymerizing polystyrene into monomers. And this is where we collaborate, not compete. Within our Mizushima factory, we are building this equipment. It's almost completed. Having said that, there has been some trouble with facilities. We had to do the rework and there has been several months of delay. We had a plan to start the demonstration in January 2023, but as I mentioned, there has been a few months delay. For receiving monomers in this circulation loop, uh, will be made into polystyrene through this chemical recycling. Recycled styrene monomers will be polymerized to make polystyrene, and that's what we are trying to demonstrate. This is the overall timeline. In 2023, our demonstration plant will start its operation. The monomer that is created here will be utilized to uh, produce polystyrene. 
So that's the implementation stage. We want to demonstrate that polystyrene is recyclable completely. 1,000 ton per year is the size of the demonstration. So in the following year, we want to scale up. By 2030, we want to commercialize this depolymerization recycling of polystyrene. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kobayashi. Uh, we really understand the current state. I just want to give you uh, a short question. So, PS monomerization. I think uh, several companies are working on this recycling, as you mentioned. In Mizushima, you have a plant being built. As you mentioned, if you build a large scale plant, Well, eventually, how many uh, plants do you plan to build in Japan? I believe the polystyrene needs to be collected in different regions. So if you have the rough number of plants. As PS Japan, we are planning to have two plants in this country, Mizushima and Chiba. We currently have two factories. The monomers that are recycled will have to be produced into polystyrene. So it is important to co-locate the recycling plant to our current plant. Toshiba plant system, our partner, has an idea of having this equipment installed where it is convenient to collect the feedstock. And I believe that's their thinking. So our solution for Peace Japan is to build two plants eventually. Thank you very much. So you have a strategy of finding convenient locations for recycling plants. Thank you so much, Mr. Kobayashi. Next, we, the next presentation is uh, to be made by Mitsubishi Chemical uh, Green Transformation Promotion uh, Divisions. We have Mr. Kenichiro Mawatari on the topic of uh, chemical recycling in a circular economy for plastics. Okay, thank you very much for giving us this time and opportunity. I would like to uh, introduce uh, our company, Mitsubishi Chemical, uh, briefly first. And then what kind of recycling, especially chemical recycling, uh, our program. And also, uh, not just the chemical recycling, uh, but the how we try to make a business out of the plastic recycling as a whole. And these are the topics I'd like to uh, go over. So let me start. As I said, uh, these are the topics. And the first about the outline of the Mitsubishi Chemical Group. Mitsubishi Chemical Group Corporation has about 70,000 employees. And within that, Mitsubishi Chemical and Japan Oxygen and other uh, companies and uh, industrial gas and uh, pharmaceutical uh, out of uh, these chemicals. So we have different solutions based on the material and uh, technology related to these materials. Uh, we provide solutions and we are providing these uh, different solution areas, including healthcare and industrial gases and chemicals and performance products. And uh, our idea of circular plastic um, is uh, next topic. And first, uh, this is overview of the situation in Japan. And uh, what is the uh, the chemical recycling and the carbon recycle for chemical industry? Uh, the current carbon recycle, uh, which focuses on the oil and use it and uh, largely thermal recovery 
and only part is uh, material recycle or other type of uh, chemical recycle, but it's at large, uh, it is not really well recycled in, as material. About the 2300 and a one third, a one third of that is a plastic and the plastic recycle, I must say, is very limited at the moment. And for, to become carbon neutral or establish a circular economy, and then if we do so, what uh, we should expect is shown here. The carbon neutrality is, uh, when it is assumed, the plastic uh, has to be circulated and we have to have a viable circular plastic recycling established and or bio-based chemical or bio-based plastic uh, has to be available and also use uh, CO2 as a material to produce chemical uh, product. And we need to have these multiple routes for production and circulating and chemical industry. And so we need to change the structure of the whole industry. And in doing so, chemical recycling is a one of the viable means to achieve that, to contribute to that. Now, as Mitsubishi Chemical Group, uh, what uh, we hope to do, currently we have uh, pyrolysis to produce naphtha. And from the used plastic, uh, obviously through the sorting and pre-preparation, we have material cycle, recycle, and then uh, further chemical recycle to come up with the version equivalent product. PS Japan talk about uh, their focus on PS, and we are looking at the PET and polycarbonate and acrylic uh, resins and we are tackling at the recycling of the major resins and also monomer resins which is difficult to recycle uh, use that as a oil and bring it actually reduce it back to, return it back to oil. So material recycle and mono and chemical recycle, uh, they all need higher level of separation and sorting. And in order to use a low level of sorting output, then we need to use more energy, consumer energy. So we don't believe that the one solution will solve the entire problems. We need to take advantage of the feed characteristics and the material characteristics. So simply, uh, in addition to the straightforward recycling of the used plastic, we need to design for environment and we as a manufacturer of the plastic material and products and brand owners also need to we believe uh, and we hope that the they will start giving consideration for that so that uh, they can design for recyclability and that will help establish the plastic recycling loop and given that we believe that we can identify the appropriate way of recycling uh, after plastics are sorted 
and uh, some of our initiatives to commercialize chemical. And uh, there was a the talk about the uh, turning plastics into back to oil. And the use it as a part of the plastic uh, material, but also use it for uh, uh, petrochemical products. And we're working with Eneos that the oil company and the uh, chemical company working together uh, to come up with this uh, oilification business and refined burst company which um, and focuses on the collection of the used uh, material and and uh, we are hoping to start uh, this with uh, process to start in 2023 next uh, the pet waste recycling and pet bottles are already recycled but working with the kirin holdings that the material side and the pet bottles or pet material, which we have not been able to use as material, uh, currently roughly about uh, 1 million tons in Japan. And uh, they can, are now found in the form of uh, sheets and fibers. And uh, we hope that the product out of these can be turned into bottles or films as and uh, use them as the feedstock and that's the partnership we have we are working currently with kirin or kirin holdings next about the acrylic resin chemical recycling is a very feasible for that and for Mitsubishi Chemical, we have different uh, production lines and process. Acrylic MMA, and as such, it is, or for MMA, it is a very uh, dominant uh, major resin. But uh, we want to establish the recycling scheme and uh, we are working on this uh, we are working with uh, honda uh, motor and so the waste uh, pmma especially from tail lamp uh, unit we want to uh, collect uh, them and also working with the microwave uh, chemicals uh, technology and also working, uh, trying to establish this in the overseas market. And I mentioned about the Refineberg Park, a bars uh, group company. And uh, we need a partner who has expertise in the collection of the waste plastics and for different uh, plastic recycling uh, we hope to collaborate with them and their know-how and our know-how uh, needs to be put in use for the plastic recycling and in plastic uh, recycling traceability is a very important concept that the to prove that the material product uses the recycled material or not uh, with high confidence and also will lead to the higher level of the plastic usage or recycled plastic usage so the plastic recycled data needs to be traceable or at least uh, some part uh, it may have to have a uh, confidentiality uh, yet having the traceability uh, that is something 
needed not just for plastics but for CO2 consumption as well. So for that purpose, we are working with the uh, circular bus and uh, BNB or um, Finiverse and DNP as well. And finally, and some of the challenges for making a business out of this plastic circulation. First, in terms of technology, we need to be able to come up with a low cost and low uh, environment impact uh, sorting technology and the pre-processing technology. And uh, it has to be low cost because it is a used resin we have to work and also we need to uh, come up with the sorting system or separation technology with a low impact on environment and also we need to be able to scale and also modularization of the plant uh, is are needed for reducing the cost and uh, for designed for recycling with easy to decompose and disassemble and as for business scheme and plastic collection scheme needs to be very robust uh, in order to accommodate uh, large uh, volume. And for that, we feel we need to work with the partner with the expertise on that. And as was mentioned, the developing application is very important how to make use of these uh, outputs. And another point is the how the uh, environmental friendliness be considered as a business value and the cost for innovative approach and needs to be and the cost incurred for such novel approach needs to be shared as well as uh, probably the profit as well. And finally, in terms of rule and methodology, uh, we need, need to establish the rules for calculating the carbon footprint and also supporting the Genesis uh, era businesses. And before they start uh, making business, and I think we need a program or programs to support them and once again to establish the plastic value chain a uh, circular plastic value chain we need to have a commitment by the companies and also uh, the consumers uh, need to highly evaluate the it's uh, the products of value uh, for environmental purpose and also uh, many good challenges and trials by the businesses are essential. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mawatari. And not just on the technology of Mitsubishi Chemical Group, uh, you pointed out the very important points for the society uh, in approaching this. And there are a few questions we have received regarding the oilification. And there are two questions. And first, uh, working with Eneos, uh, when are you starting the business and also any plan for expansion of that? That's the first question. Second one is in your approach for oilification and some volume will be used for oil refinery and the other for naphtha cracking. And what will be the split between the two? Thank you very much. The first question, as I mentioned uh, this time, uh, 20,000 plastic uh, processing capacity by 2030 or 2023. And the other question is that the 20,000 ton is uh, processing is uh, first step. The next step is not uh, really uh, defined in our plan or it is not ready for disclosure but using the first step as the stepping 
stone to create a build a bigger plant by 2030 and that's what uh, we are planning for so this uh, kachiwa uh, area project is uh, only a first step uh, for us and as for the second question our work with Eneos um, uh, what's a split uh, between for refinery and the naphtha cracking I cannot disclose uh, that but our technology is uh, feasible for chemical applications and that's one of the characteristics of our technology and so by working with the oil refinery uh, company we can use uh, more of the uh, resources without leaving anything that's all thank you very much thank you very much uh, mawatari sam Now we would like to go to the last presentation. We have speaker from AEPW, Alliance Wind Plastic Waste. We have Mr. Takehiri Anada. He is going to talk about Holy Grail project of digital watermarks. So Mr. Anada, please take the floor. Can you hear me and can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Thank you very much for this valuable opportunity to speak to you today. Once again, I'm from Alliance to End Plastic Waste, AEPW. My name is Anada. I'd like to introduce our Alliance briefly. And then I want to talk about the recycling activities focusing on sorting center. I'll just give you one example of sorting technology uh, that we support, Holy Grail project focusing on digital watermarks. So APW, what is this doing? It started in 2019, it's a new organization. We have about 80 companies today, although it started with only 27 companies. Multiple projects across the world are implemented. There are six Japanese companies as members. Majority of the companies which presented today, Veolia, Tomura, Mitsubishi Chemical, all are members of AEPW, so they are our activity partners. So what do we do? We look at plastic value chain, the whole chain. By having participation of the chain, we want to demonstrate that plastics circulation is a solvable issue want to solve that and contribute to the circular economy and we want to demonstrate the technologies to enable that and as you can see on the next page to the right we believe that we are not a think tank we are a do tank so we focus on actions going back to earlier page throughout the project we support various projects what do we mean by supporting projects? Member companies, knowledge, their technologies, and a funding included. We provide networking support so that our activities can spread throughout the world. To be a little bit more specific, we have multiple projects underway. As you can see on the left hand side, we have this portfolio location to Asia, EU, Asia of course includes Japan. This is the portfolio allocations to different regions. And in Japan, we have two projects in progress. Our wish is to increase the number in Japan as well. As we have discussed, as we have had wonderful presentations today, whether that is chemical or mechanical, in order to make recycling succeed, 
we have to have clean waste plastic flow after precise sorting and separation. So the start point will be the sorting. This project, Holy Grail, what it does is to utilize digital watermarks. As you can see on the right hand side, digital watermarks cannot be seen by humans, but you can utilize optical scanners to recognize the electronic information that is inside the digital watermarks. And this will be the information utilized for selecting plastic waste. So it's just one example of selection and sorting. The optical scanner has a splitter. It will recognize and read out the watermarks and use that information for selection. There are phase, three phases currently. We are in phase three. We are planning to provide funding. One of the major characteristics is the precise selection and sorting. The so granular sorting is enabled by this technology. And the investment to include digital watermarks will be required. So that will be pros and cons, strength and weakness of this project, of this technology. So uh, it, this is more about output and input. So you have to have thorough discussion before implementing this. Input, by which I mean, what ways do we need to sort and select? I think the answer vary depending on the local government. And output would be the extent of sorting. Earlier we heard presentation by Veoria and others, their experts' opinion. Do we have to sort down to material type? Do we have to sort it and select down to different colors? So what should be the degree of granularity of the output? So these questions need to be thoroughly considered. Because of the time constraint, I'd like to conclude my presentation. As I mentioned earlier, in the near future, in Japan, there will be a new project. I'm looking forward to working with all of you. APW would like to be connected with the players of Plastic Value Chain. So if you are interested, you're all welcome to become our members. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Anada, I just want to ask you a simple question. In Europe, phase three has started. In this Holy Grail project is ushered into phase three in Europe. So when phase three is implemented, Eventually, this might become international standard. Is my thinking correct? The applications may be consumer's product, daily product. Are they the only applications? Do you think this could be utilized for other product areas as well? Thank you for that question. As I mentioned, so that is a question about output. To what extent do we have to select and sort? Including that question, we are currently formulating a strategy and sharing that information with the participating countries. Is it going to be a standard or not? Well, there are many requirements in EU, and I think there will be a converged standard in Europe. It's a possibility, but in Asia and Japan, uh, they have different requirements. The local government have varying requirements. So what sorting, to what level of sorting is required? I think that question needs to be asked, especially when you make a decision to invest. Thank you so much, Ms. Dana.
And with that, we have completed all the presentations and we thank uh, all the participating country, companies and presenters. And finally, from the Metropolitan Tokyo government has uh, some uh, more follow-up words. And this slide shows the plastic usage future vision uh, toward the carbon closed cycle, which will not let the carbon out of this uh, system and we've been promoting this since 2019. IPCC's sixth report was just announced, and the greenhouse gas, and uh, for decarbonization, we need to establish net zero. So we can't waste time anymore at all. So energy-based carbon decarbonization is important, but for feedstock like plastic uh, also needs to uh, make sure that the, there is no carbon emitted into the atmosphere. And so this may be just one example, but uh, plastic products to be first uh, reduced and reuse and refill also uh, needs to be accommodated so that the same plastic product can be used over multiple times. And also today's topic was the recycling and uh, turning plastic uh, back to its original material format. And for that, uh, we have uh, learned many technologies today and material recycle, chemical recycle, uh, sorting uh, needs to be combined and also for design, design for environment is also very important. So this kind of a carbon closed uh, plastic cycle uh, is very important. Once again, reuse business has to become a mainstream and also closed loop recycling system uh, needs to be implemented in society. Next, please. And Tokyo Metropolitan Government is now inviting proposals from the private sectors for innovative technology and business projects. And uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government would like to support uh, such uh, projects uh, taking place in Tokyo. And from today, we have just started the application process uh, for new project for this coming fiscal year. And uh, if you check the URL, that will be great. And also TSEC, Tokyo Circular Economy uh, Promotion Center, has a number of uh, initiatives going on, and the single-use plastic and the food loss um, we have consultation and business matching services, uh, basically uh, trying to become a one-stop shop. And also, we have uh, circular economy implementation establishment uh, in each uh, localities. And uh, we have uh, been supporting social implementation projects. And, Tokyo Circular Economy Action, and if you could uh, look it up, and that's all the housekeeping announcements announcements from Tokyo Metropolitan Government. I'd like to thank everybody for spending your precious time and uh, advanced sorting strategies, and how also we discussed a lot about uh, how to deal with the multi-layer films and the use of a solvent through chemical recycling and monomers and digital, digital mark, watermark. Uh, these are some of the very uh, new technologies which are popping up. And we hope uh, these will be put into good use for social implementation of these. For that, we need uh, parties from different corners of society uh, businesses and NGOs and governments 
and Alus, and we hope uh, you will continue to uh, join us in this effort. With that, uh, we'd like to conclude online symposium, The Future of Plastic Recycling. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.